In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to chat with your PDF data right inside ChatGPT itself without writing one single line of code. This will be done in two steps. The first step will be to create the AI application that understands your private PDF file. And the second step will be to create the ChatGPT plugin itself. In this tutorial, we'll be using two tools, Flowwise AI for step one and Langdoc for step two. So let's begin. What does the end user experience look like? After we build this project, we're going to see in the ChatGPT plugin store a plugin that we have built, and the information for that plugin is here, and it's local to us that we can use. So let's see how it works. I'm going to ask a question that ChatGPT will figure out that it's our plugin that needs to get called and we'll call that plugin to get the specific answer to that private PDF that I've trained my AI application to answer with. So you can see it's calling our, our plugin with this question. And then our plugin will answer and then give the answer back. Let's dive into step one, creating an AI app with Flowwise. The PDF that we're going to use for this example is a simple one. It is uh, a earnings report uh, from this company, Triton, and has highlights, financial results, operating performance, and many things that you may expect to see in an earnings report. I'm going to go into my Chatwise AI main screen and add a new flow. You can start with uh, some of the templates, but I wanted to build this from scratch so that you can see how the components fit together as you build them. So this is a blank canvas. I'm going to add a node. First node I'm going to add is related to a chain. Okay, so I'm going to add the conversational retrieval Q&A chain here. Next, I'm going to specify the large language model that I'm going to use. I open AI as my large language model. And I'm going to start hooking up these two components. I'm going to add my API key. Then I'm going to start connecting a large language model into this chain. Next, I'm going to build out the vector store. Let's think of a vector store as the database for uh, the information that we want to query. I'm going to use something called Pinecone. More about that in another video. And Pinecone will have its own API key as well. I'll specify that. And the environment is this one that was set up. And then this was more experiment, so I'll put that down. And then this is just earnings as the namespace. Okay. So we've inputted these uh, three boxes already. And now I'm going to also connect this uh, pinecone retriever into the conversational agent. All right. Next, I'm going to now uh, tell it which PDF file. So in here, there is a PDF loader. So I'll specify PDF loader here. And I'm going to tell it which file. And then I'm going to hook up this into my vector store. 
All right. Next, we're going to need uh, some way to convert this text, this PDF file, into something that this vector data store uh, understands. And this is called an, an embeddings uh, component. So we'll add an embeddings component in here. And again, I'll specify the API key for OpenAI. All right. Lastly, I'm going to add in this uh, text splitter. Okay. So I'll use a recursive text splitter. And I'm going to chunk it 1,000 and chunk overlap of 200. And now I'm going to connect it into here. And then I'll also connect my OpenAI embeddings into here. All right, so this is your flow right here. All right, so what it's going to do is look at the PDF file. It's going to use this recursive check uh, character text splitter to chunk it or split it into various pieces. And then it's going to insert it into this vector database using this uh, embedding. So this is a way to essentially codify uh, the text. And then we're going to put it together with this conversational retrieval uh, QA chain. So why don't we just save it and chat with uh, All right, now that we've saved it, why don't we uh, start running it and ask it some questions? I'm going to ask it what was the earnings for the first quarter. And it should be about 136 million. That's correct. And I'm going to ask it um, how many outstanding shares were repurchased at uh, 1.7 million. And lastly, just to test it out a little bit more, I'm going to ask it what was the adjusted return on equity. I know for Triton, it was about 22.5% in the first quarter. All right, there you go. Now that we've created the AI application that is trained on the PDF data, let's dive into step two, creating the chat GPT plugin using Langdoc. All right, in this section, uh, we're gonna show how to create the chat GPT plugin itself using a service called Langdoc. So what I'm gonna do is create the new plugin and I'm going to name it finance, call it finance. And the description I'm going to use for this plugin will be plugin for information about Triton. The description for the model, this is a especially important field. And I want to highlight here, use this field as a prompt of what your plugin can do and how it should act. Okay, so it's especially important to tell ChatGPT how to use this. So I'm gonna say this plugin is useful for getting earnings information for the company. And I'm gonna tell it how to call it with the arguments. So arguments to the call will be a question. That is the question that is passed into it by ChatGPT. And this question, this argument will have value user question. So that's especially important. 
Now I'm going to upload the icon. All right, I'll save. So that's the first part of it. Now that I've created the outline uh, for the application, for the plugin application, I'm going to create the API itself. All right, I'm going to add a new folder. I'm going to call it earnings. And I'm going to start a post request. And I'm just going to call it uh, earnings. Call this earnings ID. And I'm going to summarize this. That gets information on Triton earnings. And I'm going to name it. Now, this URL, this is a URL to the service that we've built, the AI application that is exposed through Flowwise. So I'll show you how to get that URL. So I go back to my uh, screen here. This is my Flowwise screen. And at the bottom or at the top right, there is this API endpoint. So I'm just going to go to the API endpoint here. And I'm going to now paste that into my langdoc URL. OK, now I'm going to then also say, all right, what is the response? I need to add response code. So I'm successful. And I'm going to uh, create a schema for it so that it knows the value of the argument that I'm going to pass in. Just create an object. This is a question. And I'm going to add a property to it. And it's just going to be a string. All right, the string is a question. And then this is a required field. All right. All right, I'm going to name this uh, schema. And then I'm going to go into the API game. And then I'm going to start using the schema. So I've selected the schema, and then I've selected question. And then I'm going to save it. All right, it's ready to use. Now I'm just going to go deployment. So in here for your plugin, Langdoc will create a URL that uh, represents the information for your plugin. So I'll copy that. And now I'm going to go into my ChatGPT uh, user interface. And then I'm going to now add this plugin that we created. Oops, I'll, I'll start a new session. I'll go to the store. Inside here, there is this tab here called Develop Your Own Plugin. So I'll press that. I'll paste the information that I got from Langdoc. And now ChatGPT is processing it, and it's found the plugin information. And next, go ahead and install it. And now it's enabled. OK, so why don't we try it out? I'm going to ask a question that ChatGPT will figure out that it's our plugin that needs to get called. And we'll call that plugin to get the specific answer to that private PDF that I've trained my AI application to answer with. So you can see it's calling our our plugin with this question. And then our plugin will answer and then give the answer back.